Every year, hundreds of bills are introduced in the Washington State Legislature. Yet by the end of the session, only a small minority of them will have become law. Why is it so difficult to create new laws, and what steps must a bill go through in order to successfully navigate the legislative process? Bills are proposed changes to the law. The ideas for bills come from many different sources, including citizens, legislators, lobbyists, state agencies, or even the governor. While many parties may draft a bill, it must be introduced by a legislator who becomes the prime sponsor. I'm very pleased to be able to present this legislation to my colleagues. Once a bill is filed, it goes to the code revisor's office where it gets a number and a title. Unlike bills at the federal level, bills in Washington must have a single subject. The bill title is then chosen to clearly reflect that subject. It then advances to first reading, where it is introduced on the chamber floor and referred to an appropriate policy committee. The chair of the committee decides whether or not to schedule a public hearing for the bill. Today's uh, job is public hearing on uh, House Bill 2127. Giving interested parties a chance to discuss the pros and cons of the proposed legislation. And I'd like to thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee for the opportunity to speak. And Anyone may testify at the public hearing and express their views on the bill. After the public hearing, the chair decides if they are going to schedule an executive session for the bill. During these sessions, members vote on whether or not to move the bill out of committee. They may also propose amendments or changes to the bill, or even replace the bill entirely with a substitute bill. It takes a majority vote to move the bill out of committee. If there is a cost for implementing the bill, a financial analysis called a fiscal note is attached to the bill. Bills with fiscal notes over $50,000 must move through a specific budget committee, such as Senate Ways and Means or House Appropriations. If the fiscal impact is lower than $50,000, the bill can skip this step and move straight to the Rules Committee. The Rules Committee is where legislators decide which bills will make it to the floor and which ones won't. It is often called the gatekeeper. Far more bills end up here than can be dealt with by the full chamber, and members can pull only a certain number of bills from the committee. Substitute Senate Bill 5969, the Secretary will read. If a bill makes it through the Rules Committee, it advances to the chamber floor for second reading, where members can offer amendments. Amendment at the desk, Secretary will read. Strike everything after the enacting clause and insert the following. It can then be moved to third reading and final passage, where members debate the bill's merits and vote upon it. Mr. President, 30 yeas, 18 nays, one excuse. If a majority vote in favor of the bill, it moves to the opposite chamber to begin the process all over again. A bill must pass both chambers before it can advance to the governor's office. If the bill is amended anywhere in the process, both chambers must agree on the changes. Not only must a bill pass both chambers, but it must do so in a timely manner. There are legislative deadlines called cutoffs that may stop a bill during the process. We're here to, uh, to sign 1632. If the bill successfully makes it out of the legislature, it goes to the governor's office, where he or she has a certain number of days to act upon it. Unlike legislation at the federal level, if the governor does not sign the bill by the deadline, it automatically becomes law. The governor may choose to veto a bill or a section on the bill, in which case it takes a two-thirds majority vote in both chambers to override the veto. Considering the obstacles, it's no wonder that 80% of bills in any given session fail to become law. But that difficulty is intentional. It allows only carefully studied and debated legislation to succeed.